So gather your supplies. And I think we'll just start out with a little bit of sketching. If you have a scrap piece of paper or um, a piece of paper from the printer that you can use to do a bit of sketching on. Because we're going to look at the dragonflies and, and kind of discover how, they, how they're how they made. So um, I've started a little sketch on a piece of scrap paper of my dragonfly. And I'm going to go over it with a marker so that you can see it. Now you'll want to <clears throat> just use a pencil. And then after we've done a bit of doodling and, and learning about yeah. the dragonfly, then we'll go ahead and draw it on our watercolor paper. So that's how we'll do that today. Um, so here we go. I'm going to, I'm just going to go over the marks that I've already made, like I said, so that you guys can see it. So the dragonfly is going to, we're going to start with his head. And I'm just drawing a simple circle here. And then I'm giving him his little eyes, which are basically half circles. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then this part of his body is called the thorax, which I learned today. And that's the part right here that his wings are attached to. And it's really quite a muscular center for locomotion. And it, this part right here controls his wings and his head and his little legs. So it's kind of interesting. So then I'm going to work on his abdomen here, which comes down. And if you're just thinking about it, it's a curved line and another curved line that meets down at the bottom. And that's a real simplified version of it. But basically, that's what it is. And then this part of his body is divided into about 10 segments. Sometimes they're kind of hard to see because they're way up in this area. But I'm just going to make some marks here. Now, you don't have to do this right now, but it's just kind of fun to get these done. And I have to count and make sure I've got enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, these are the parts that we, we talked about, the little segments. Another really interesting thing is that if I measure the wings in relationship to his body, it's kind of kind of cool to see that it's half, or excuse me, his body from not including his head is going to be as pretty much as long as his wings are. So if you're wondering how long to make the wings, they're about the same. Um, length as from here to here and here to here. So you can make some marks on your paper to get those organized. And then they're really just simple curved, um, curved lines, but you can also look at a detailed drawing and get them a little more precise. But I'm just getting these drawn here. And actually this comes down a little here and connects up to this thorax part of his body. So it's kind of fun to do these little dragonflies and to think about where, you know, that they're flying around so much right now. I was at Bunker Park and they were just sort of almost swarming. It was really interesting. And then I read that they really eat a lot of mosquitoes. So that's a good thing, I would say, that they're eating up those mosquitoes. So there's a really simple drawing of a dragonfly. Um, and you can get that sketched on your paper now and think about how you want to place it on the watercolor paper, okay? So I've done a couple. Now these I did not do with um, marker, excuse me. So are these upside down, Tom? Or? Um, I can't see it. Maybe I need to turn it the other way. I'm kind of monitoring. Oh, no. Okay. So I've drawn these on a piece of, this is um, when actually about five by seven piece of watercolor paper. And I've drawn a little, little lily pad <laughs> underneath him, which is kind of fun. And I put some other lily pads on here. So that would be one idea that you could do. This other one that I did, I'll do two of them today for you, but this one is just positioned on the paper so that He's, part of his wings are kind of going off the page. And I'll show you the ones that I finished so that you can see how these are. And he probably needs to go this way. 
Okay. So one thing when you're getting this drawn on your watercolor paper, I want you to try to remember to offset his body so that it's not just going from corner to corner. So I started his head right here. And you could certainly start it on the other side too. It doesn't matter which side you start it on, but make it so that it's not just a diagonal, okay? Um, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. This one, um, I painted the dragonfly first, and then I did the background. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you another one. Let's see. Okay, is that right? Um, this little guy was painted with um, the back, I, I drew the dragonfly with pencil, and then I painted the background first, which was another way to do it. So you can paint the background, in other words, paint around the, the dragonfly first, and then do the dragonfly. And this one, he's got his wings that are kind of going off the page. Which, you know, it's kind of nice to do that sometimes, it makes it more interesting. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of photographs that I found, and I don't think it matters which way these go, but I guess it could. So, there yeah. So this is a this is a beauty. I love you know looking at the way that the wings are and the beautiful colors in the wings. And you can always go back later after your painting is done and add these these details and this line work with either a, a um, small round brush would do it, you could use a watercolor pencil, or you could use a colored pencil, that'd be kind of fun. So beautiful, beautiful. All right, here's another one that is really cool that I found. And we, thankfully we had a lot of um, ink in our printer, so I was able to print these off, but this one is, is very beautiful too. Can, can you point out the wings with your finger a little bit? Oh, okay. Yeah, so the wings are really, really cool right in through here. They're very transparent, some of them are. Um, one of the things I was reading about dragonflies, and here's another one uh, that's pretty neat. One of the things I was reading about dragonflies is that they don't sting and they don't carry diseases. Um, they spend most of their life as little baby dragonflies and they hatch from eggs underwater and they, they stay in this stage for close to two years. And then they're, when they're adult dragonflies, they live for just about two weeks. There's a lot of different kinds of dragonflies. And they're, one of the cool things about them is that they can fly straight up and down and they can fly from side to side and they can also hover like a like a helicopter, which I thought was really, really cool. And they're also aerial hunters. In other words, they're eating everything when they're flying around. So that's a good thing with the mosquito population. So kind of fun. They also have really, really good vision. And when you think about their head, it really has mostly, um, it's mostly the eyes in there. So I think that's kind of cool. And they also grab the insects with their feet and they have really sharp teeth. So another thing that I was reading is that the names for these, um, the dragonflies are really descriptive. There's the, the common green darner and there's the widow skimmer. And that one sounds kind of cool because it skims across the water as they hunt. Um, the blue dasher and the white tail and the wandering glider. I just think the names are so fun. Um, so dragonflies are really fun to watch. Like I said, when we were walking along at uh, Bunker Park and they were just swarming all over the place. So really fun. So let's start. I hope you've been drawing while I've been talking here um, and we'll start working on our, on our little painting. I also found out one more interesting thing is that Minnesota has a dragonfly association and I went to the website and um, there's all kinds of interesting things that that website had to offer, so kind of fun. Anyway, all right, so let's get started on our painting. I'm gonna start at his head, and I'm gonna get that painted right here. So I'm just going in with my color. 
got a little purple too with my brain. And I'm just filling this in. Now, when I paint this, I, I did not wet this first because it's a very small area. So I'm just going to get that color in. And as it starts to, um, to, it's still wet, so I can drop in color here to start giving it some shape. And I can always go back. So I'm going down here now and bringing some of this purple color down into this area here. I can also leave some little slices of white. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I left a bit of white. In other words, I didn't put any paint there. So I, I left it empty. And it's a nice highlight because with watercolor, as many of you know, the paper white is the lightest light that we are gonna use with watercolor. So keep our keep our paper white happening by leaving it that area empty. And it's great for highlights. Okay, so now I'm gonna move down the body a little bit and I'm just kind of keeping it really simple as I paint, but I'm going to leave some white here too as I go. So I'm gonna just leave a little slice of white as I create this, these segments in his body. We can always go back to dries and add another layer of darkness if we want to, or highlights or not highlights, but the um, detail work on top of the initial wash. So. These are fun to <laughs> really fun to different color combinations, and you can paint these pretty quickly. You can be very loose in the way that you apply the paint and you can also be a little more detailed. So it's totally fine. You can change the colors up as you go along. I just added a little bit more blue down here at the bottom of his body. And I'm going in now with a little bit of blue around the edges here. I'll hold that up so you can see. While the while the uh, wash is still wet, it's it's a good time to be adding deeper values. In other words, you're getting a stronger uh, mix of paint, and so it's going to be darker. You can work from light to dark on something like this. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. I can use a dark color, like mix a little bit of your blue in maybe with a little bit of green. And you can do his little eyes. I didn't use black, I just mixed green with my blue and purple. You could put a little bit of red in there too. That would help. All right. So next step, we're going to get going on these wings here. I'm going to dampen this wing here up at the top. The top. This, is, this top wing is called the fore wing, which is interesting. And I'm getting it a little damp. And that's really a nice thing to do because it will help these colors blend together right on the paper. So sometimes we mix the color on our 
palette to see if we like it and we can always test it and check it out and see if we're happy with it. We can also let it mix right here on our paper. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've got clean water that I have placed there. And I'm gonna go into this corner area with my blue and I, I'm okay with it running from his body. I don't mind that it's doing that and it's actually flowing very nicely now out to the outer edge. Hopefully you guys can see that. So here we go again with my blue and I'm just keeping it very soft. His wings are transparent, right? But it's still, it's kind of fun to add lots of color, if, you know, if you want to. So here we go, I'm gonna get a little bit different blue here in there. And I'm just dotting that color in and letting it, letting it move into the initial wash that I had applied before. So I'm rinsing my brush off, and now I'm gonna go into green. So if you have a nice green, um, I wouldn't use a real, real dark green. Maybe take your green and mix it with a little yellow, which would be nice and brighten it up a bit. So I think I'll do that. I have lemon yellow, which is really my new favorite yellow. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've mixed my lemon yellow in with the green. I'll show you my palette so you can see what that's looking like. And I'm gonna take that and start working it into this area. So I know that because this is damp, I also know that the green and the blue are gonna mix and be really pretty together, kind of making a little bit of a, a teal. So that's what I'm doing right now and I'm letting it blend. to this area right here. I'm just kind of putting it in different spots. And because, remember this is wet, it's blending very nicely right here on the watercolor paper. So as I said, it's fun to use different color, different colors in your dragonflies and experiment a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that now. I'm going to go into my lemon yellow and I'm going to pop some of that into the screen. So I went from the blue to the green to the lemon yellow. Now you could do this the other way around and it would work as well. So you could start with your yellow and go to green and then go to blue. That would be fun. So. I'm just going along here now. My pencil lines are still here and I'm not concerned about the pencil lines because once it's dry, I can erase them or I can just choose to leave them. So maybe you want to go in with a little more color, maybe a little bit more blue along the edges. Notice that I didn't outline these with my brush first. I started filling it from the inside and let it work outward. So that's a, that's a good thing to remember. I also left a little bit of white here. In other words, there's no, no paint there. So I'm happy with those little wings. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna work on the bottom ones, which are actually called the hind wings. So kind of interesting. So again, I'm using clean water and I'm not soaking it. So there's no puddles on top of the paper, but it's, it's being absorbed into the watercolor paper. So we wanna give it a minute. If, you, if you're using too much water, it's gonna sit on top like a big puddle. So you wanna give it a couple minutes to soak right in. How are we on time, Tom? It's almost 1.30. Okay, we're doing good. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on these wings here. I'm gonna start with my blue and just let it flow from this area right here. Well, they don't have to be the same, they can be different. You can have a little bit more blue coming along with this one. 
If you want to move the color that you've applied, just take your brush with some clean water on it and move it along the bottom of the brush stroke that you made. That's called softening an edge. You can also pull color away by using your brush to lift the color. And then I'm wiping my brush on a little piece of tissue. So I'm gonna do that again here. Okay. I'm gonna dip into my green again and bring some of that along this area here. I'm just sort of dotting it in for fun. It's always good to keep your colors fresh, use, use fresh paint, have a clean place to mix your colors. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that. Wash your palette. If you don't have a palette, you can always just use a, a plate that'll work or a plastic plate of some kind. Lots of things will work. Watercolors are very, very versatile as far as traveling and painting in lots of different places. So right now I'm just dot, um, dotting in that yellow in different spots. So, and again, if you want to get more, have more pigment and get it a little stronger than just rinse your brush off and get some fresh pigment, pig, fresh color and pop it in. All right. All right, so there we go. It's kind of a cute little dragonfly. And now I'm gonna use my brush with blue and some green and a little bit of red and get a nice dark and do his little arms here or his legs. These are his arms, right? <laughs> okay. And so when I do that, I, I really need to anchor my hand on the table. So if, you're, if your work is, is still wet, you might want to wait to do this part. Okay. All right. So there we go. I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I do the background. So we have enough time that we can do one more. So this one, I'm going to start with his body again, and kind of like the one that I did right here, I used the pinks. I was thinking about the, the photograph that I, I think I showed you guys earlier, that, that dragonfly. Let's see, I'll hold it up. It's got this gorgeous pink body. So you could go in with some pinks and purples here, but I think yellow would be fun to add into this as well. So I'm going to use my pink and if you don't have pink you could use a color called alizarin crimson. That works really well. I've watered this down a bit so that it's not really strong. I've added water to this this pink. Thank you. This is called permanent rose. I think it's cotton. So there's my color. And I'm just gonna do it the same way that I did my other one. I'm gonna start right up here at his little head. It's a really pretty pink. I think purple would be pretty with this too. All right.
also take my paper and um, turn it in different directions. And when I do that, it's very fun because the, excuse me, the watercolor will flow in the direction that I hold the paper. So I'm holding it. So it's kind of making this cool design right now, flowing down. <laughs> and I can also do that on the other wing. So I'm working around the dragonfly. I'm not going to go putting any water on the dragonfly's body. I'm just dampening the paper around it inside where I made the, the lily pad. Okay, so I'm getting that wet with clean water. That's why it's good to have a couple buckets or yogurt containers or whatever you have, cottage cheese or something, and have clean water available. Don't work with dirty water because it will just mess up your colors, basically. Okay. It's 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Okay, we're doing good. So I'm just using some green here, and I'm going to mix it in with a bit of warm yellow. I've got Hansa yellow, which is another wonderful pigment. I'll show you what I've got mixed up right here, whoops, <laughs> that's my green with the Hansa yellow. And I've dampened the lily pad and I'm gonna just start popping in my green here, leaving the highlights, in other words, leaving some white areas. These could be like where the sun is glistening or shining right on the lily pad. And I'm gonna work my way up to the dragonfly's body, but I'm not going to get any paint there. And that will work because the dragonfly is dry that I painted. Okay, And I'm popping in a, a, a little brighter green into this mix here, so it's not all the same color. I'm using my brush um, with some strokes that are Let's see, I'm dabbing a little bit and I'm also using my brush up and down. this other lily pad painted real quick. And then the last thing I'm gonna do here is once everything's dry, I can add my water.
but I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to go back here to the, the first, well, this was the second one I did, right? And I'm going to add some grasses to this in my background. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to get it wet because I want this to be soft. So this is, again, we're talking about soft edges. And I'm getting this damp back here. And I'm going to go up here too, even though this might dry pretty quickly, but I'm just going to get this nice and damp. Okay, and you could draw first before you paint, or you can just go ahead and add your grasses if you want to. Now make sure that you like the green that you mix up. So check it first. That's a pretty green that I mixed. If I want it to have a little bit more um, blue in it, then I would add a little blue to my green. I can also add yellow to my green, and that's really nice. So I'm thinking about how grass is. Here's the dragonfly, and this is gonna be more a little blue up here in this corner. But I'm taking my brush from the bottom of the paper, which is here, and just making some brush strokes that are gonna move upward. So the dragonfly is flying this way to the right on mine. And so I'm going to make some marks that go the other way just to make it. The green from a, a yellow green to a little um, truer green, maybe I guess that would be the word for it. But you can see that the edges of the brush strokes are very soft because this is this is relatively damp. So again, I'm going to take my brush and move it up here and make some more marks. And maybe it skip skips behind the dragonfly, which is kind of pretty. So I want to make these not all the same height. I've kind of changed it up a little bit. And I think that looks kind of pretty. And I might make some smaller ones here with my brush. They're kind of going in different directions, which makes it sort of interesting. Okay, and back, skip, skip. You can just leave the background white if you want to. You don't have to completely fill it all up. And real quickly, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue up in here where it's still damp. And just get a little wash here of, of blue. And I'm just moving this paint around here, leaving some white. 